video for the first time, or you might just be hearing these words. But God sent me here today. He's got a message. You know, God said in end times, He would actually let people know about who the, the mystery of God, about really what's the people to know, and He's been holding back. So today, what I want to do, He's asked me, it's taken me almost 11 years to get to this point in my life. I'm uh, 78 years old. I lived in the world for 67 years, and I've lived with Him for the last almost 11 years. But He told me He wanted me to give the message of hope, a message that everyone will understand. Believers, non-believers, I don't care what creed you are, what color you are, what background you are, what religion you are, God created all of you. And the God that created you is the same one that created me. And He created everything. And I'm going to tell you a story today about how I came to salvation, how I met Jesus, how I met God, and how I met the Holy Spirit. Now, it's almost unbelievable. Now, I'd like to tell you about my miracle. In other words, my miracle of how I was saved, how I met Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit all at the same time. And to me, that was a sign, that was a miracle. I'll tell you just a little bit about my life so you won't, you won't understand that unless you understand how I grew up. Well, I grew up, uh, I was a sharecropper. I was just like Adam was a, was a farmer. I grew up as a farmer. And you talk about being poor, I won every poor contest that was ever given. But the thing about it, and I, when I grew up, I lived in quite a few different homes. Uh, when I was five, I was on my own. And I knew I, I knew I had to have somebody with me because I'd have never got through my life. In fact, my sister uh, passed away when she was six months, six hours old, six hours old. And I lived uh, three months in an incubator. Now that's a long time. So God must have known my will because God knows everything. He knows the future. And He must have known that I wanted to live and I wanted to, to be able to sit here today and tell you about my miracle. And maybe that's the only reason I was born. Maybe that's it. And I want you to take a look at this picture because I want to tell you that's going to play into this miracle that I've, that I've got to tell you about. But let's just tell you when I was 10 years old, I had gone to church. I had read some of the Bible. We didn't practice. We didn't read, practice the Bible. I wasn't taught the Bible, but I went to church. I went to several different types of church. I never heard about the Holy Spirit, but I just knew that uh, I knew Jesus existed. Uh, I didn't know why He died. Uh, I knew God existed, but I didn't know why He existed. And so when I got to be about 10 years old, uh, and that's uh, what I feel is the age of me knowing good and evil, or good and bad, uh, I learned a lot about it earlier. But actually for me, as far as, the, as, the, as being saved, they told me if I got baptized, I'd be saved. And I'd go, I'd go to bed every night and say, well, I haven't been baptized, Lord, don't let me die. Don't let me die, I don't want to go to hell. Boy, I was so afraid of going to hell, you won't believe it. Because you know, when I went to church, I heard more about God's rapture, uh, wrath, the wrath of God. And I, did, I said, wow, you know, I don't know if I really want that. But I tell you what, I didn't hear enough about His love. And that's another reason, I really haven't talked very much about God's love. Well, God is love, and He's good. And because He's God, He's so good, and He loves me so much, again, that's why I'm telling this, this story that I am. So let me get back to when I was about 10 years old. I was baptized, I got baptized in water, and I told Jesus, I know I said the sinner's prayer, and I, and I, and I I told Jesus, yes, you know, I want you and everything, but guess what? I didn't believe it. I had so many unbeliefs by the time I was 10 years old, and I was unbelieving everything. So I wasn't, I really didn't understand why Jesus died. I didn't realize it. that's why if he died, he'd take all the sins I had. Well, unfortunately for me, uh, it didn't take. I really didn't take. I told everybody that I knew Jesus, but guess what? I was lying to him, wasn't I? I really didn't know God. And it says in the Bible, you're only gonna know me, the Father, if you know my Son. So I went another 
50, uh, till I was 55 years old and my mother passed away. I think I was very vulnerable then. And I was just wondering, my mother had never told me that she was going to heaven. She never talked to me about heaven or hell. But I sort of feel like she, she made it. In other words, I feel like a lot of people, uh, especially our family members, are gonna be there waiting on us. Don't know that, there's no, no proof. But for me, I thought, well, I'll tell you what, uh, I, maybe if I got a 50-50 chance. So I repented again. I was very, very vulnerable. So I put my hand on the Bible. I said the sinner's prayer. And I told Jesus, yes, I, yeah, I believe. And guess what? It didn't take. It didn't take. And I didn't understand. I didn't stop doing anything I was doing. I didn't go start reading the Bible. I didn't have any hunger. I didn't have any, I wasn't seeking anything. I was still in the world. I was still living in the world. So it went on for years and years uh, until I was 67 years old. And finally, I know what happened then. I had a lot of people I think I knew me. I knew I was starting to get around a lot of people that knew Jesus, and they knew. They didn't want to tell me, but they knew I didn't know Jesus. In fact, the way I lived, I was such a sinner. I, I tell you, I did everything. I did porn. I drank a lot. I was just a mean, bad guy. And I couldn't even understand why my grandkids or my wife would have anything to do with me. Video for the first time, or you might just be hearing these words. But God sent me here today. He's got a message. You know, God said in end times, He would actually let people know about who the, the mystery of God, about really wants the people to know and he's been holding back. So today, what I wanna do, he's asked me, it's taken me almost 11 years to get to this point in my life. I'm uh, 78 years old. I lived in the world for 67 years and I've lived with him for the last almost 11 years. But he told me, he wanted me to give the message of hope, a message that everyone will understand Believers, non-believers, I don't care what creed you are, what color you are, what background you are, what religion you are, God created all of you. And the God that created you is the same one that created me. And He created everything. And I'm gonna tell you a story today about how I came to salvation, how I met Jesus, how I met God, and how I met the Holy Spirit. Now it's almost unbelievable. It might be the most important minutes of my life because I want to share with you a miracle, a sign, but more importantly, I want to share with you what it took for me to say yes to Jesus and what it took for me to know I'm going to heaven and not hell and why I know I'm in heaven now. So this is basically what happened. It all started in January of 2010. I was laying in bed, just eating dinner, and I watched TV, and I turned the TV off, and I'm married. Uh, I was in the bed by myself. My wife was sleeping in, the, in another area of the house. And it's probably a real blessing that she was. Because when I turned off the TV, I noticed something that was kind of eerie. It was just dark. It was the darkest I'd ever been in my life. I looked out the windows and I didn't see any light. It was just pitch dark. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I was gonna say in the lower part of my body, but I'm just gonna tell you, it happened, it started in my groan area. And I know now why it started there. So I'll explain a little bit later on, but you know what? I've never heard very many people tell me this, but I had this burning started and it got warmer and warmer and it was almost like a fire. It got so intense that actually scared me. I thought, wow, what's going on? Well, the fire started and it just went right up the center of my body and it was like it was splitting me in half. And I thought, oh my gosh, what's going on? And then the next thing I heard, I heard a voice and it was coming out of this dark, dark voice. And the voice said, John, do you know who I am? And I just heard a voice. I said, well, I can't see you. He said, John, do you know who I am? And he asked me again. And then he asked me, do you want me? 
And then I saw a vision. I thought it was a person, but I think I just saw a head. I, I know it physically wasn't anyone there, but I think it was a vision of just a head. And I thought, wow, it was kind of behind like a veil or something. It wasn't very bright. I could just barely see, but there was the shape of a, a person, a man. And when he asked me again, I said, no. And do you want me? And I started crying. And you know, I started crying and I hadn't cried for years. I was the meanest, toughest guy that ever lived. And I wasn't gonna cry. I was always told it was a shame to cry, weakness to cry, but I couldn't, I couldn't understand why I was crying. And also, I'm not really sure, but this burning that was going on, uh, there might even have been a burning in my heart, but I felt like it was, it was, a, it was a burning. I'll explain this later on, what I, where I want you to go. I want you to go in the, in the Bible, and I want you to read a scripture. And I'm gonna give you, at the end of this, I'll give you three scriptures. And this is the scripture that, that I'm talking about, this burning and everything. The scripture that God took me back was when Abraham made his covenant with God. And if you'll read that in, in, in uh, Genesis, you'll understand maybe what, that, what I thought that burning was. So let me go on and, and, and tell you, I was crying and crying, and I really didn't know what to do. And then all of a sudden, I started seeing my life. It was like in color, my whole life going. From the time I came out of my mother's womb, I saw all my, my father, everybody I'd ever saw. And somehow, I don't know if it got answered then, but it seems like every question that I wanted to ask God got answered. And I couldn't figure that one out. But it was going at light speed, but I was still being able to understand it. And then I said, after that was over, and you know, I, I know who that was. That was the Holy Spirit right there. And the Holy Spirit was doing that for me because they say his job is to convict you and convince you who Jesus is. Well, he was doing his part. He was trying to show me right there. So I've still got this burning on and I can't figure out what that burning is or who, what, why. And I've got this, this show and this, it's, it wasn't talking to me. It was, just, it was just a movie, like a movie. I'm watching a movie. I'm watching my life. And I got done with that. And I heard the voice say, well, do you want me? And I still couldn't, I still couldn't make up my mind. I'm sitting there struggling. I'm struggling. I've never struggled so hard in my life. And I really didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. And then, I, then the voice said, well, you know, we've been calling you. He said, we, he didn't just say I, he said, we. He said, you know, we've been calling you all your life and you never have answered that. You never have answered that question. And I said, I haven't. And he said, no, you haven't. And I said, well, uh, I just don't, I don't know what, I can't do it. I just couldn't do it. And the next thing I know, and I don't know if a hand came through, just the hand or whatever, but something grabbed my hand and pulled me. I don't know if it pulled my soul out, my body out, but I just floated right out of that room. And the next thing I knew, I thought I was in heaven. It was, I was just in the brightest clouds. I was in the brightest spot I'd ever been in my life. And it was almost blinding. And in this, I felt love. I had never been loved before. And basically, I was looking for love. The first two times I told God no, that I was saved, I thought I was saved, I was really looking because I was afraid of going to hell. I didn't want to go to hell. And boy, we all should be afraid of hell because that, that lake of fire is going to be there and it's going to be really hot. So I was afraid. I was afraid of going to hell. But this time I was actually looking for love. And you know, because God is good and God is love, He sent the Holy Spirit there. I think that fire that I had, He sent Jesus there, that vision I had. And guess what? Not only that, He wanted to show me or let me feel like heaven. So I thought He took me to heaven. But later on, I found out he actually took me to a mountain. I was on a mountain. And that light I had, that was the same light that Saul had when he was saved. And that light, that was the tr Jesus Christ. That was, he filled me. I wasn't in heaven. I was on a mountain looking down, or feeling, and I thought I was looking into heaven. And I said to that man, that person who I didn't really know it was, I thought it was just, if there was a God, God the Father, that's who I thought it was. But it was Jesus. And he, transformed, he was in his transformed body. That's what happened to me. He took me up there. And you know what? I believe, I told him, I said, look. I said, what are you talking about? I said, I, I, said, I want to go in there. I, I, see, I still thought I was going to go into heaven. And he said, 
no, you can't. You haven't told me yet. I said, told you what? That you wanted me. I said, of course I want you. I said, is any any way I don't want this? So immediately I went in and I felt like he just, he took me. He just took me and and commenced me and put me just right in with him, okay? Now, I didn't really understand that. But there's a verse in the Bible. When Jesus was resurrected, the first person that he talked to was Mary Magdalene. And who was the second, uh, who was the next people he talked to or persons? Well, he met two disciples on the road, didn't he? And he walked with them, didn't he? And he told them about himself. He didn't, he didn't reveal himself. He didn't tell them he was Jesus. But you know what? He spent time, he supped with them. He went in there. They asked him, he went and ate with them. And you know what he was doing? He was telling them who he was and he was telling them about his story, this, this Bible here. It's all about him. This Bible is all about Jesus. It's about nothing else. Well, I think he took the time. I don't know how he did it, but he told them everything in that Bible. And you know, I thought I was gone uh, because I woke up later on the bed, but I didn't really know where I went. It says, it says when you, uh, the Holy Spirit will baptize you into Jesus, did I jump? Did I go into Jesus' body? Did Jesus, since He can be everywhere anytime, He can go to the past, the present, the future, did He take me back with Him on the cross? Because it says we die on the cross with Him and we're buried. Did I go, you know, I was, I was put in His body, all right? Did I go pay for the sins with Him? Was I resurrected with Him? Or did He just take me somewhere and tell me who He was, who, I, who He was, so that I would truly understand? Because when I woke up, and I felt like I had been in a deep sleep. In fact, I thought I had died, really died, and come back. But what happened, I believe, for some reason, I really understood why He died. He died on the cross to pay for our sins. And not only did He pay for our sins, He paid for everything else, Every, the, everybody's sins, past, present, and future. So that's why He had to die. That was God's plan. And and thank God I'm, I'm in that plan, aren't I? And you're in that plan. So all you have to do is tell him yes when he asks you yes. So like I said, I don't know how long it took. I just know that when I woke up, I was a different person. I truly was person. Now that the fire was gone. Now another thing it says in the Bible that uh, God will circumcise your heart. Now what does that really mean? Well, we're born with two spirits. We got evil spirits and we got a good spirit. And I think somehow in that, that part of my heart, that evil spirit was when he said he circumcised it, it's like he cut that out. He just cut it out, he rooted all, all that out, okay? He took it all out of me. So that's why I believe that, that when you get baptized by the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit did, I'm in Jesus' body. Well, guess what? It also says there's only one body in and, and Jesus. Who's Jesus in? Well, he's in the Father, isn't he? And you know how he got his baptism? I always wondered why the water baptism, you know, it says when, when, uh, when Jesus got baptized, he was uh, 30 years old, all right? And he was getting ready to go and minister for, th- uh, for three and a half years before he got crucified. So God wanted to glorify him and tell the world who he was. He was the son of man. So when he got baptized, he got submerged. Baptism means submerged, totally submerged. So you have to be totally submerged. You do. You just can't get sprinkled or whatever. And I don't. And I don't believe. I believe what happened there is that was kind of a unique baptism. I think that that Jesus, that God wanted Jesus to get. He said, "I'm, I'm getting baptized to fulfill the righteousness of God." That Jesus was baptized. He was put under water, and that signified that he was baptized in the body of God. See, even though he had God with him, he was still the son of man. He hadn't gone through the baptism, so he had to get baptized. So in Jesus, so he got baptized into his father, God. And when he came up out of the water, what happened? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God came down to witness. And the Spirit of God came down as a dove, like a dove. And you know that was a dove? I really believe that was a dove because people had to see something. And he said, if, a, if the dove comes down and does not leave him, dwells on him and does not leave him, he is the Son of God. And what had came out of heaven? God spoke out of heaven and said, there's my Son, I'm proud of him. I'm glorifying, there he is, okay? And who else was there? Well, 
the Holy Spirit was there too, all right? So he got baptized, he got put in the body of his father, he got the Holy Spirit. So he's, now he's got everything he needs, doesn't he? And what is he gonna go do? He's gonna go preach the gospel. He's gonna go preach the gospel of God, what everyone needs to know. Why he died, that he was real, God was real. So that's what a lot of people don't seem to understand. So if you think water baptism, if you're gonna get just baptized in water like I did all those years, you know, I know I'd have gone to hell. I would have gone to hell and I would have said, but God didn't let me, did he? He didn't, he didn't let me die. He saved me three times from dying, I know he did. And, he, and those three times that I, got, that I got saved from not dying, uh, I did foolish things, I did stupid things. So I just know that God was there protecting me and he knew, he, he knew from the beginning, before the world was born, who John Pickles was. And he knew where I was gonna be and I was gonna be with him, he knew that. So somehow his plan got me through that, didn't it? Well, when I came, when I came awake, when I actually woke up, uh, I heard another voice, and this is the most important thing. If you wanna know God is real, I know there's a movie about God being, God's not real, God's real. Well, I'll tell you what, I heard another voice that I hadn't heard before. It was Jesus' voice. But this time I heard another voice. And it said his voice sounds like thunder and everything. Well, this was a real gruff, gentle, gruff, uh, wonderful voice. And it was so loving. And the voice said, John, John, he said, welcome to my world. He said, welcome to heaven. Welcome to my kingdom. He said, I love you. And he says, I promise you eternal life. And I was there making a covenant with him one day. It was just like the covenant that, that God made with Abraham. It was just like the time he saved Paul. So anyway, I'll give you these verses in a second. But, but that's what I said, man. And I started to cry. I started to cry. I didn't really know, I didn't really know what to tell him or ask, say to him. So for some reason, see, I didn't know God had a will. I didn't know he had an acceptable will, good will, or perfect will. But here I am, Peter, again, and I said, okay, if you're gonna promise me eternal life, I gotta promise you something back. I gotta give something back to you. And I said, I promise you I'll stay in the center of your perfect will. Didn't even know he had a will. And somebody asked me one day, why did you tell him perfect? And I said, you got me. But I found out later on why I'm so happy that I said that. I'm glad I told him I'd stay in the center of his perfect will. And you know what happened when he did for me then? Jesus. It says Jesus is the one that baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. Well, Jesus baptized me with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was there. It was like, I can't explain it. It was like being on an ocean or being on the beach or being on an ocean. And I felt this wind it was just, it was just there. And all these waves started washing over me. And they, it was from the tip of my head to the bottom of my feet. And these waves came one after another, one after another, and it was pure love. It was like milk and honey, warm milk and honey. It was really thick, and it was so thick, and I didn't want it to stop. I'd never felt anything like that. I've never felt like that again. But I'll tell you one thing, I just didn't want that to stop. And I really feel like I know what heaven is gonna feel like, and being around God is gonna be. It's gonna be so good when I meet God, the Father. It says you're supposed to fear, the, the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Father. Well, there's so much love there. For some reason, I'm gonna fall flat on my face. Flat on my face, I know I am. Uh, so anyway, that was, that was feeling, I didn't want it to stop. So a lot of people say that the Holy Spirit doesn't go in you, or in, but what about the indwelling? So here I am, I'm laying there, and for the first time in my life, in my heart, I've got Jesus, I've got the Father, I'm in one body, one spirit, I've got their spirit. And all I need is something to seal it. And that's what God did for me. He sealed that, he put that Holy Spirit there and that Holy Spirit just wrapped it around there. And I knew then, I knew then, I, I knew I was in heaven. I wanted to go there, right? I knew I was already there. I didn't have to go anywhere. I, I said, this world, I'm here. I know I'm in heaven, but thank God, I've got God the Father in me. I've got God the Jesus in me, the God the Son, and I've got the Holy Spirit and I'm guaranteed a place in heaven. Now, 
The only thing about it, there's somebody else out there I haven't told you about, right? The devil. Now I told you about God being omnipresent and Jesus being omnipresent, the Son, the Father. The, the devil, he's there, but he can only be at one place at one time, all right? But I tell you what, he will do everything he can to keep you from going to heaven, all right? And we can't let him do that. So anyway, I've got to, I've got to the point where I'm laying there, I'm finished, I've never felt like this in my whole life. And when I thought, just thought it wasn't gonna get any, it couldn't get any better, guess what? You see this picture? What does that look like to you? Well, that's the bubble. That's the bubble, that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit just surrounds the whole universe. He's there, that's why God can be everywhere, all the time, every time. He's always there. Well, that bubble, and not only was that bubble there, that bubble was there, it was so beautiful, it was bright. Now, I can't describe it, but if you want to go uh, and, and, and see a picture of it, go, uh, there's, a, there's a, uh, a movie that was made by a book written by Max Licato, who was one of my pastors, by the way. In fact, Max, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for this. About a week before all this miracle happened to me, I went to listen to one of your sermons, and I hadn't gone to church in 30 years. I listened to one of your sermons, and you was preaching about, out of Acts. I don't know exactly what, ver what you were talking about, but I think you might have been talking about Saul and how he got saved. Because about a week later after I, I listened to that, you planted the seed. You planted the seed and I think I wanted, I wanted that. So anyway, uh, that's the way it works. See, man doesn't save anybody. Man, uh, Jesus is the only one that can baptize you, okay? Uh, the Holy Spirit's the only one that can baptize you in Jesus. And Jesus and God do that. No, no man can do that. So anyway, Max, I want to thank you for it. If you want to see what this, this bubble that I'm in looks like, to get the movie, it's, it's called The Christmas Candle, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But the candle was so bright, and I looked out and the room lit up, and I thought, wow, the fire department's going to be here any minute, my wife's going to come down, the next door neighbors are going to come down, because this, this was really something. Uh, Maybe if you know, if you believe, if you know, uh, you may know what I'm talking about. Uh, but I tell you what, that was something. I even got up because uh, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. I got up and I took a shower just to make sure uh, that I wasn't dreaming or that was real. And that water came right through that bubble. That bubble. So that bubble is still here. It's still here. I just can't see it anymore. And I know what that is. That's the seal of the Holy Spirit. That's what I've got. Now, he, he sealed everything. So when I go to heaven, the only thing that's not going to go to heaven with me is the blood I have and the flesh I got. Because the flesh is sin, isn't it? So I feel like my soul and my spirit, uh, how are people going to know how we look? How will our relatives know us? Well, I, I believe, for me, I believe that my soul is the same size as my body and it's covering, you know, it's, it's on the inside. The skin is covering over it. And I think I've got, I've got all of that in me right now. And I believe that with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. And I know it's hard to explain, hard to understand. And you're probably thinking, well, you know, I got, got to be nuts. He's crazy. Well, guess what? After all that happened, that bubble went away. Some of that love that I had, or that, that indwelling of the Holy Spirit, some of that left. But I still got some of it. It never has gone away. And a lot of people say, well, wait, you get that, you get that from, from reading the Bible, the wisdom. Well, I'm not saying this, this happens to everyone when they get saved, but it happened to me, and I feel like it happened for a reason. And the reason is I'm telling you about it, all right? Now, you don't have to believe it, because I got up the next morning, and it was just daybreak. It was all, it was all night. I struggled all night. And what I think I was struggling with, if you'll go into Genesis and read about Jacob, and I used to swear every other word was GD or F or whatever. I mean, I, could, I knew every word and I probably used it every other, every other, every utterance that came out of my mouth. And you know why it is? Is I have, we have, the evilest part of our body, the sin part of our body is our tongue. And our tongue, out of our mouth comes good and it comes evil. Well, before that night, I had a lot of evil in me. I just told you I'd been circumcised. All that, hopefully that spirit was gone. But I still had that sin nature because I still sinned. But I'll tell you one thing I couldn't do and I couldn't understand it. And maybe this, I didn't come out of there talking in tongues. 
You don't have to. You get everything you need. I got the power. That was, the, that was what I really needed. That's what God, when I promised Him that I'd stay in the center of His perfect will, He gave me the power to do that. And I, He knew. He knew it because He saw it. He could see the future. So He knew what I needed. And I needed the Holy Spirit. I needed that. But the next morning I get up and I'm trying to start my normal conversation. And it wouldn't come out. I almost choked. In fact, it was very hard for me to say, damn. I said, wow, if I do that, it's a sin. So somehow, that sin nature, it was still there, but I, I, I couldn't use it. That was the first thing I knew. It wasn't speaking in tongues. And by the way, speaking in tongues, you know what that really means? That's a language. That's a language that Adam and Eve used. I believe they used it all the way up to the time of Babel, where God had to come and scatter the world to all nations and they all had different languages. Well, before that, they all spoke a language. And I believe this is the same language that when on Pentecost, when they came down, the Holy Spirit came down, just like they came down for me that night. They were all speaking a language that everybody understood. So I believe that language is gonna be used again someday. And you know where I think it's gonna be used? Possibly in the millennium. And I know it's gonna be used in heaven. We're all going to be speaking the same language, and I believe that's it. So, uh, if you're afraid to get saved, you're afraid to te tell people yes, because you're going to be speaking in tongues. Don't worry about that. Okay. It took me two years to figure out how to how what I had, because you know why? I didn't have the understanding or the wisdom, and it didn't bother me. But I tell you one thing: I knew I was saved. In fact, the first thing I told my wife. I said, you're not going to believe what happened to me last night. And she looked at me and she said, what happened to you? And I told her, I sat there and told her, I don't know how long it took. We had coffee and I talked to her about it. And the first thing she said, you're crazy. Because you know my wife, she didn't believe either. Neither one of us believed. And I think that's why we argued all the time. We didn't have, we weren't yoked. And you know what yoked is? Yoked is having Jesus in you, having that spirit. And that's why God intended. That's why, why He had one man, one woman. And they were supposed to be yoked to Him, to that body of His, that spirit of His. And I'll talk to you later on a little bit about the Bible, why the Bible was created, and how He got that spirit. Well, so let me finish the story about what happened to me after that. Now, Jesus told Saul, that, that uh, before he saved Saul, that he was going to show Saul how to, how to struggle. So anyway, when I, when I talked to my wife, she says, I'm crazy. And I told her, well, if you don't believe it, I said, but you know what? I said, I need a Bible. I don't know why. That was the first time I'd ever asked for a Bible. Well, we had one, but it was in German. It didn't, it wasn't, I couldn't read it. So I went to the next door neighbor and she gave me a Bible. And the Bible on it was 101st Airborne. And my brother, you know my brother was a paratrooper. Uh, and I'm so proud of my brother, Ronnie, I'm so proud of you. So anyway, I read the Bible, and for the first time, I don't know where I went, but I opened it up and I read it, and it was like the words just dropped, dropped. They just came out of there, they just jumped right out at me. And for the first time, I truly understood what they said. And you know, that's a seed, that's a seed of God, that's the Word of God. And that's the truth. It's the truth. So for the first time, I was getting the truth. I wasn't getting it from man. And my birth verse, by the way, just to let you know, I was born June the 7th. And Galatians 6, 7, is, they, everybody says they have a Bible verse or a verse in the Bible. And, and if you'll go to Galatians 6, 7 and read that, it basically says, God cannot be mocked. God cannot be deceived. So God, you can't mock him, and he'll know everything, so you can't deceive him, all right? And it says, most importantly, to put your trust in God, and not in man. So my wife looks at me and tells me I'm crazy. I got the Bible, and I'm not going to really be able to. I don't have time right now to explain to you uh, what happened to me after that and how I started understanding for the first time and with, through the wisdom, through the Bible. Uh, where I went to, who I met, uh, and how I became stronger in His Word. 
and how I really started to learn uh, who he was and why things uh, really happen, good things happen to bad people, bad things happen to good people. So the understanding ca ca came 11 years ago. Now the problem I got right now is my story of salvation. Uh, I know this doesn't happen to everybody. I thought it did at first, but it does. I know it doesn't. So God has got his plan for you. He's got a way he's gonna bring you to him. He's calling you. You may not know of it. He calls you all, he's calling you constantly. So just get enough belief in you, enough understanding in you, enough love in you, if that's what it takes, to tell him yes when he does call. And Jesus asks you, do you know who I am? Because Jesus is the I am, and so is God. Amen. Hi, you know if you're watching this, that Jesus sent his disciples out to cast out demons and they came back and they couldn't cast them out. And they wanted to know why. And Jesus said, well, you didn't have enough faith. You didn't really believe you could do it. So he asked, the, and there's a kid there with the demon. And, and God, his father came up to him and he said, Jesus, please cast my son. Ever since he was born, he's had this. And Jesus said, well, do you believe? And he said, if you believe, you have just a little bit of faith, a faith of a mustard seed. If you'll just have that little bitty faith, but the belief is what you need. Can you, will you believe? And I'll cast him out. And the, the father said to Jesus, but father, Jesus, I believe. Can you teach me how to unbelieve or not to unbelieve? Teach me not to unbelieve, Jesus. And you know, I think that's the problem we have today is about believing and unbelieving. So with this video, I hope to help you learn how not to unbelieve, but to believe. It's so important. Also, I'm going to share with you my soul a little bit. I think my soul is actually going to come out. But more importantly, I'm going to share a miracle with you. And this miracle I'm going to share with you, I always wondered why did it have to happen to me? Why did it happen to me? I've asked that over and over. Well, guess what? I know now. I know now. It took me many, many years to understand. But before I tell you that miracle and what happened to me, I want to try to explain who God is. A few things that I didn't understand. And I don't think I could tell you the story without you knowing who He is. Well, I'm going to tell you what. God is everything. God is everything. He's good. You know, it says in the Bible, they asked Jesus about being good or not. He said, you know, only, only my Father, only God is good. And I understand what that means. He was the only person. God is the only person in this world that's perfect. He's the only one that's truly good. And you know why? Because God, before the everything, all God had to do, God is, you'll, you'll, you've heard this before, He's omnipresent, He's omnipotent, and He's omnipresent. Well, let me try to take a attempt. I've heard this from a lot of people about who God really is. Well, let me take a shot at it. It says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, I always knew it was God, but later on when I read in 1 John in the Bible, it says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And that kind of confused me. I said, how could it be the Word? And if Jesus is the Word, how could it be God? Well, if you'll think about it, when Jesus was in the world, all right, when he came in, he spoke, and he spoke the Word of God, didn't he? Because he had the Son of God in him, and he had God the Father in him. I know that's hard to believe, but also in the Bible, the prophecies prophesied that Jesus would come. He would come someday at the seed of a woman, not the seed of a man, but the seed of a woman, and that was Mary, the Virgin Mary. And when he, and he said, and his name will be Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Well, you know what Emmanuel means? It means God. It means God. Also, an angel came to Mary's husband, Joseph, and told him, your wife's going to bear a child. It's going to be from God, and the child's name will be Jesus. So God, the Son, and God the Jesus, when he was born, and he was born of water, wasn't he? He came out of Mary's womb. 
Well, who was his father? Well, his father was God. Who was his mother? His mother was Mary. And she had the seed of who? She had the seed of everyone all the way back to Abraham. 42 generations all came down to Mary. Jesus was put, uh, he, was, he was born, and that's how he walked the earth. And that's how, he was, that's how we know that God, when Jesus was here, he got a body, he, got, he gave God a body to walk around with him. And it wasn't just the Son, the Father was there too, because it says in the Bible, when Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. I know that's hard to understand, but he also spoke. When he spoke, he said, everything that I'm speaking, Jesus said, everything I'm speaking is coming from the Father. He was getting all of his directions from the Father, who is all powerful. Now he's so powerful, if you go back to Genesis, what did he say? Let there be light. Well. You know what? He only said that one time. And you know when he said it? He said it billions and billions of years earlier. He spoke the word. All he had to say is, let there, let there be light. And everything he spoke, let there be this, let there be that. Everything he spoke, he created everything. And how did, how did he do it? Because he's so powerful, all he has to do is speak it. So that God is the word, isn't he? Jesus is the word. The Son of God is the word. The Holy Spirit is the word. And when I read the Bible, when that comes out of my mouth, it's not what I'm speaking, it's what God wrote. It's what God is saying. So that's the Word of God, and we all have it when we speak, when we read the Bible. So let's go back to who God is. So if God was there before the universe, before anything, when, when did that happen? Well, I believe it happened billions and billions of years ago. He was outside the universe. Uh, that's why he's omnipresent, all right? And that's why he's everywhere. And a lot of people think, well, uh, how can he be everywhere? Well, he's not only everywhere. He's everywhere all the time in the past, in the present, and in the future. So he is everywhere all the time. Now, how does he do that? Well, he's, he's made up of three persons. He's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All right, now, how can I explain that? I'm not going to use an egg like I've heard a lot of other people use. Uh, I'm not going to use a pretzel, which is another thing I've heard people use. What I'd like to use is I would like to say that He's a spirit. And it says in the Bible that God is spirit. He's one spirit, one body. All right, so God is God the Father. Is one, he's a person. He's not a people. I don't, the reason that, that we're people is we were created. We're creations of God. He wasn't created. He was. He was there. He's always been. He's always been there. He's always been there. He's always going to be there forever and ever and ever. And guess what? The word will never go away. The word is never going to go away. So God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are always going to be there. They've always been there. And if you'd like to think of it as this, they're all three persons. They all have bodies because they have bodies just like we do. They have hands. They have mouths. They eat. Uh, people don't realize that they eat. They can eat if they want to. They don't have to, but they do. So what I'd like to, my analogy for, for who they are and what that substance is, they say it's one substance, three persons. Uh, I'll, just say, I'll just say it this way. God the Father cannot be God the Son. God the Son cannot be God the Holy Spirit. And vice versa, God the Holy Spirit can't be God the Son, and God the Son can't be God the Father. But however, there, there are one substance, and that substance, think of it as a spirit that has a biblical cord on it. Just like when you get out, when you're born and you're cut off from your biblical cord, think of that spirit of being able to go anywhere all the time that can go together. In fact, when God speaks, Jesus speaks. When Jesus speaks, the Holy Spirit speaks. So God, they get all the direction, everything that's ever done comes from God the Father. I don't know if you can fathom that. It's hard to explain that, but just think of it. Think of, think of it for a minute. And how they're omniscient. Well, He knows everything. They all, all three of them know. They all have the same attributes. All right, They have that deity, that, that, that one special spirit that no one will ever, ever get but them. But think of them as all attached to a biblical cord. And God the Father sitting up there in the third heaven, He's above everything. He can't see sin. You know why God the Father can't see sin? He, he delegated that to His Son. 
He was so, he's so good. That's why he's, he's good. He can't see sin. But God the Son can. Jesus can. The Holy Spirit can. They have to. They're in, they're in it all the time. They're come here. They've come here in the past. They've come here in the present. They, they're they're going to come here in the future. 